Lenovo X Clarity Administrator provides centralized resource management, allowing administrators to deploy infrastructure solutions faster and with less effort. This video will overview its five basic functions, inventory, monitoring, firmware management, configuration patterns, and OS deployment. Let's take a closer look. From the dashboard, we can get an overview of our environment. And so let's talk about our first function, inventory. We can see that we're managing our Lenovo servers, our storage, our switches, as well as our flex chassis. Let's look a little closer at some of our inventory. Let's start with servers. So if I select on my server list, we can see the 54 servers that I have under management. And I can use filtering to select systems that have certain status, or I can just type whatever I know about that particular system. It could be part of the name, the IP address, serial number, whatever I know that will quickly filter down and find the system I'm interested in. From there, I can select into the system to get further detail, some of the same information that I had a moment ago at the table, as well as more detailed information about the options that are installed inside the system. If I want to get even more detail, I can click on inventory, and now I can see the detail on processors, on power supplies. I can see the detail on the, the drives that are installed inside the system. So all that information that I might want to know about that individual system. From here as well, I can take other actions. So I can do things like launch my remote control. Uh, I can have power cycle control. So, you know, basic control over the system is available from here as well. So that's a server. What about a network switch? Another good example, I can also manage these devices. Look at the inventory here, for example. And I can do things now in the network switch going into the ports where I can see what's happening with the ports can even do things like enable and disable individual ports on that network switch. So function number one is inventory. I can see my inventory, my servers, my storage, and my switches. Second thing I might want to do is monitor. You can see from the dashboard, we're already getting some information on health. Up here on the top, we always have the pull down that I can use to identify any other errors that are happening. In this case, you can see we've simulated a, a memory failure on some of these systems. But Getting the information here in the XClarity console is one thing. What's really important is being able to get that information delivered outside of XClarity. So event forwarding can be absolutely critical. Here on the event forwarding screen, we can see some of the different things that we can do. We can set up syslog event forwarding. We can set up emails. We can do SNMP traps. If we edit one of these, we can further see how we can further refine the event forwarding function. For example, here I can limit the specific devices that I want to have events forwarded for, or specific events type. I can even set up a scheduling so that if things should only be forwarded to me from an email during certain days of the week, uh, I can set that up as well. So this is going to allow me to really get information contributed outside of XClarity to whatever additional monitoring tools are important for me in my infrastructure. So that's the first two, inventory, monitoring. Let's take a look at provisioning in the next three areas being able to first set up my hardware using configuration patterns. Now, the idea of these patterns is to be able to automate the process of new server setup and also be able to make sure that I can be done consistently. So with a pattern, I'm defining some of the basic hardware features inside the system. For example, my local boot drive. I can set up my I.O. adapters here. We can see I've got a four port NIC on the motherboard. I've also got a fiber channel card installed inside this system. And I can even go into very detailed firmware settings that might be necessary in order to customize this particular setup for how I'm going to deploy these systems. So the idea that I can have this pattern available so that when new servers come in, I don't have to go through a laborious manual process to set this up. I can simply select the pattern that I'm interested in. I can select deploy. I can very quickly find the system that I'm interested in deploying to, select that and then hit the deploy button. It'll go through the process now of setting that machine up and getting all that hardware configured. Once that's done, the next thing I might want to do is deploy an operating system. So if I go back up to provisioning and select deploy operating system, let's say that I had just, uh, I had just run that environment uh, and now I can go through and let's say I just ran, ran that and created uh, you know, a new system here. Um, 
I can find the machine that I just ran my pattern on. I can select that. Now the hardware is configured. Now I simply need to get an operating system down on it. Let's say we're going to put VMware down and we want to do that down to the local M.2 drive. That's all there is to it. I could then say deploy and then about 20 minutes or so I'd have ESXi ready to go on this particular system. All right, so we've got four of the five functions. We did inventory, we did monitoring, we used configuration patterns to set up the hardware, we used the operating system deployed to get the operating system set, set up on the machine. Now perhaps we want to be able to deal with firmware. And so with firmware, we've got a couple of different layers in here. Number one is a repository. So no longer do I have to go out to the Lenovo website, spend a lot of time searching to try to find the appropriate firmware. I can simply come into the repository and say refresh catalog. This is going to pull down all the recent firmware updates that I might want to apply to a system. But how do I decide which one needs to be applied to this particular machine? Well, another part of our firmware support here is what we call compliance policies, what I would call best recipes. So all of these compliance policies you see here have been downloaded from the Lenovo site and are going to indicate for me which firmware should be applied to a particular system. So I don't have to have any guesswork about what level I need to be at. I simply take one of the best recipes and in fact let's apply that to one of our systems. So, so now we're going to apply our firmware and I'm going to be looking for a specific system here. And we can see at this point this machine is reporting back as being fully compliant. But if we look at the policy or the best recipe that's currently assigned, it's a little bit old. So let's say we want to get that up to date. I'm going to select new March level. You can see now it's doing a health check, coming back and saying, well, based on this new policy, it's really not so compliant anymore. And I can hit the plus button here and expand it out and see exactly what's being recommended for each of the different firmware elements. From there, I can simply select that device or multiple devices if I choose. And I can go through the update process to push that update down to the system, either activating immediately. If it's a brand new server fresh out of the cardboard box, I can reboot it at will, fine. If I need to then delay activation, if it's a system that's currently in my, my uh, infrastructure, I can delay activation so that the next time the system reboots, it'll connect into XClarity Administrator and it'll perform the update at that point in time. So that's a quick overview of XClarity Administrator. Five basic functions, inventory, monitoring, configuration patterns to set up the hardware, operating system deployment, and then firmware management. If you'd like to see more, check out the detailed videos on our playlist that focus in on each one of these functions.